This episode is brought to you by Off the Eaten Path. It's finally here. A great tasting snack you can feel good about eating. Off the Eaten Path's veggie crisps deliver real veggies with lots of flavor and a satisfying texture without artificial colors, flavors, or preservatives. Real veggies. Really delicious. Shop now on Amazon. This episode is brought to you by Betterment. When it comes to investing your money, you don't have to be an expert. You just have to get started with Betterment. Betterment makes it easy to automate your savings and invest in a diversified portfolio, which can help you build wealth over time. And the more you earn, the sooner you can reach your financial goals. Sign up in just a few minutes at Betterment.com. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-M-E-N-T.com. You'll thank you later. Investing involves risk. Performance not guaranteed. This podcast is brought to you by Voyage AC. Hey, what's your favorite smell in the world? Uh, You, Mm -hmm. the ocean, coffee, fresh baked bread. Okay, now take a whiff of my neck and tell me what you smell. You and freshly baked bread? (laughs) You got it, hon. This is Melanie's newest incredible scent, brioche. Oh, wow. You right? You see, there's this little bakery in France Melanie used to walk by and the smell of bread would stop her in her tracks. Don't you think this scent has the same effect? Uh, It definitely stopped me. (laughs) Nice. Well, you'll want to check out all of Voyage AC's gorgeous face and body products, beautiful scents, and phenomenal candles. So how can our listeners find Voyage AC? You can find Voyage AC on our brand new website at theonlyonepod.com. And you can go to www.voyageac.com directly. That's V-O-Y-A-G-E-E-T-C-I-E. Dot com. And as you know, Melanie is willing to give my friends and family discount to all our listeners right now. What? Yep, that's 10% off everything you buy. All you need to do is enter the only one at checkout. That's right. All you have to do is enter the only one when you make your purchase. Voyage AC is the ultimate luxury blend of travel, design, and sense. This podcast is supported by Cute Booty Lounge. Thank you to Cute Booty Lounge for signing up to sponsor another season of The Only One in the Room. I love how your leggings look on my girl. And I love wearing them. Mm. They are by far the sexiest and coziest leggings I've ever owned. And now that it's officially fall, I'm all for anything cozy. Mm -hmm. Cute Booty Lounge is made right here in the USA by women and for women. The company is incredible. It's female and minority owned. Everything they make makes your booty look amazing. The Mm -hmm. dresses, right? The tops, the lounge and sleepwear. And their leggings have these super cute patented scrunch butt pockets. There's a cute booty style for everyone. Cute Booty Lounge has you covered no matter what your style. Embrace your body. Love your booty. And to make it even sweeter, head to cutebooty.com and enter the code THEONLYBOOTY to get 15% off your first order. Uh, You better pull that website up right now and get this deal. Right? So head to cutebooty.com and enter the code THEONLYBOOTY to get 15% off your first order. Hey, welcome to Scott Talks today. We have a special meditation from my friend Jeff Kober. You've heard me talk about Jeff before. He was a season four guest. He was the only one who was a cuckold. Don't worry, I had to look that up as well. And trust me, it's an incredible episode. He's a great storyteller. This past May, I had the honor of reading one of Jeff's daily thoughts, which he emails out every day to probably hundreds, maybe even thousands of people. Jeff is not only a fantastic actor. You've probably seen him in something this week, like on General Hospital, and not even realized it. He is a great photographer. He's an amazing writer. He is also a well-known meditation guru to many, and he's one of my spiritual teachers as well. I wasn't sure if Jeff would say yes when I asked him to come on and record one of his daily thoughts for us, and when he agreed, needless to say, I was like, oh yeah. So here's a little bit about Jeff real quick. Jeff is an actor. He's appeared on many TV series like General Hospital and recently reoccurring on NCIS Los Angeles. I loved him in Shameless, uh, one of my favorite shows, The Walking Dead, Sons of Anarchy, New Girl, and many, many others. Some of his film work includes Leave No Trace, Sully, Beauty Mark, Tank Girl. And for the past seven years, Jeff has written a daily thought about meditation and consciousness that he sends out to his subscribers in which he is in the process of organizing into book form. He's also actually working on another book called The Mythology of Self, Discovering and Changing the Stories We Tell Ourselves. 
Jeff also makes wet collodion tintypes and ambrotypes in his studio. It's a really fascinating form of photography. It's pretty old school. It's really neat. So uh, you can check out Jeff at jeffcober.com. And I hope you guys enjoy this meditation as much as I do. Hi, my name is Jeff Cobra, and uh, thank you, Scotty, for uh, asking me to do this today. I really appreciate it. I'm a teacher of meditation along with the other things uh, I do in my life. And one of the things that I really have learned for myself is that, well, number one, meditation is absolutely essential for me to give myself an experience that is other than what I can have in my eyes open state, to know what is actually possible for me to feel and to know what I actually am underneath all of the uh, pieces of myself that I experience on a daily basis. But along with meditation, what's essential for me is that I begin to shift the way I look at the world, begin to shift the way I think about things. And for me, I've had to read countless things thousands of books about spirituality and listen to uh, hundreds of hours of recordings of people uh, much smarter than me talking about these things in order to start to turn the ship of my thinking around uh, to put me in the direction of what I'm meant to be, which is happy, joyous, and free. And toward that end, several years ago, I began writing a daily thought and sending it out to people. And the only assignment I gave myself in that was if someone reads this from the beginning to the end, they will feel just a little bit better at the end of it than they did at the beginning. That's pretty much what I've been doing all along. So the format that has taken shape is I read a quote or two from some other person and then I talk about it and how it applies in my life and how it might apply in someone else's life. And then I, at the end, I give myself some sort of an intention to set for the day. And the one I'm uh, going to read today is uh, what we talk about when we talk about love. And the first quote is from Rainer Maria Rilke. Perhaps all the dragons in our lives are princesses who are only waiting to see us act just once with beauty and courage. Perhaps everything that frightens us is, in its deepest essence, something helpless that wants our love. And another uh, short quote from Zelda Fitzgerald. Nobody has ever measured, not even poets, how much the heart can hold. My friend was reporting her last breakup. I told him I loved him, and that was the beginning of the end. What I meant to say was I loved spending time with him. But that word love, and then suddenly we're in the thick of it, and before you know it, it's over. The idea of love, the speaking of love, the search for love, the entire realm of love seems fraught with confusion and peril at every turn. Except for those times when it's not, you may say. But even at those times when all is butterflies and rainbows and a world of possibility, is it real? Do those times ever last? According to the Veda, love is the reason we are here. The story goes like this. There was a point when the relative world was not. Rather, totality was simply itself, oneness, pure being, non-duality. Then, totality gave itself the supreme gift of forgetting its oneness, in pieces here and there. Why? In order to experience the joy of reuniting with itself. This reuniting is what we humans call love. Self looks across itself, recognizing self. Hello in there. You're me. I'm you. Together we are. This is love. This is how nature experiences love, through us. And what occurs inside of each of us when we have this recognition experience is what we usually mean when we speak of love. From this point of view, everything becomes quite simple. In order to experience love, we simply stop ignoring the truth that the universe already is one whole, complete thing that I am this one thing and that this other person must, by definition, be that one thing as well. By knowing love is here to be found, we can't help but find it. By looking for oneness in each other, we will call forth love. Our experience of love is completely in our own hands. There is no one who is going to give me love, but the world is full of those to whom I may give the love that I am. No one can give me love, and yet, Love is here to be had. 
I only need to welcome it into my life, to say yes to the love that's already there inside my own heart, and then to offer it to another heart of nature over there. Today I will find someone at some moment to love. I will give a friend or lover a hug for no apparent reason. I will smile at a stranger. I will let go of my judgment of someone and choose to see her as doing things the best she can. And I will love her for it. Thanks for listening. Thank you for listening to The Only One in the Room. Please join us each Tuesday and Sunday for an incredible brand new Only One interview. And every Friday for On My Nightstand where I'll be reading something that I love. If you have an only one story you'd like to share or a piece of writing you'd like to submit, please send it to theonlyonepod at gmail.com. From all of us at The Only One in the Room, we wish you dopeness, health, and prosperity. Thank you.